All right, welcome back to Problem Solver Politics. I am your host, Cardin Ellis, with Cody the Oracle. Hey, everyone. And today, we got a lot to talk about today, and it's actually a pretty exciting video. Cody, what's going on? Uh, I guess, yeah, without further ado, uh, I kind of wanted to highlight a couple of things I had seen kind of come together on Twitter as it relates to the Yang Gang and kind of everything going on. Now, uh, I'm going to play this video in the background. I don't want to play it with music so I don't pull the video down. And I also encourage you all to actually go and watch the video yourself. Um, but this is a video that was done by uh, Kilgrave Films, all of the links in the description. Please check out the full video. Um, and he put together a video called Andrew Yang Rising. It's actually a really cool kind of... I guess inspirational. It definitely, I have to admit, it definitely makes it feel like a, it, 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 it highlights why it's fun to be a part of this movement. It's and, a, and I believe we don't want to bury the lead. This is what we think could get Andrew Yang on well, Ellen, question mark? Yes, here, and he, here's, what, here's where it comes in. is Because this is something on Twitter I know you guys have been talking about a lot, was the idea of like, what are some other good media outlets for Yang? And it's like, dude, Ellen would be a great place. He, he needs to do better with like a, the kind of like a woman demographic. Ellen's definitely a very popular show. So, what we see come from this, and this is kind of what I want to highlight when it comes to, because a lot of people make stuff like this on it, and, you know, videos on YouTube, the, they make memes and share them on Twitter. Well, this gentleman uh, retweeted the video and said, I'm undecided, truly, but from a purely visceral standpoint, I find this Andrew Yang video to be compelling. Now, who is this Andy Lasner gentleman, you might ask, and why are we talking about the Ellen DeGeneres show? Drum roll. He's the executive producer for it. Now, it doesn't, you know, every executive producer of every show has political leanings. It doesn't mean they book them for their show. However, I definitely think this is the impact. This is what happens when I believe the guy said, yeah, I got bored and wanted to show my support for Andrew Yang for president. So, uh, you know, don't forget the Andrew Yang media blackout. We ride in something. My point being, and I thought, and we'll go through cover more stuff like that. The point being, though, is these kind of grassroots just at your desk, putting editing clips together with some music and making it look cool and inspirational. Maybe Andrew Yang will be on Ellen in the next few weeks, and maybe he got put on the radar of the v of the executive producer because this video not put on the radar. Maybe this video is kind of what did it. Who knows? Odds are, there's we'll never know for sure. But I just thought, what a cool way! Everyone was talking for like a, a while. How can we get Andrew Yang on, on Ellen? Someone puts together this really cool video. I mean, it really is something, guys. It's about four minutes long, but I really recommend you guys all check it out. The link will be there. Please do. Uh, amazing the video. Are we gonna together. watch it or no? Uh, I'll watch parts of it. I don't want to play too much. You know, copyright stuff. I don't know what they'll do with it. But I think America is ready for a different kind of president who's more about substance than form. Ooh, I'm not a politician. I'm not someone who's emotionally manipulating people with music. Always a good idea. Decades. Yeah. <laughs> Most Americans don't Works think every that time. career politicians are going to solve our problems. Positive and I think those propaganda. problems are accelerating and getting more. It's and more just serious. emotional manipulation. No I'm also works. a parent. And when you have kids, you also have a different perspective. Very cool. Like it's a very cool video. It's about four minutes long. I don't want to run the whole thing. Mostly can, because can you go to the crescendo? Like just that 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 last minute. I'll go to the moment. Well, I'll go to the moment because the, the reason why we brought this up is remember we're talking about kind of what does it mean for like the grassroots chain support. We do videos like this a lot, right? Um, and the reason we do is because I think that's actually what sets Andrew Yang apart from other candidates. Not only his ideas, but he really he really does motivate people in a way you know, we don't see other candidates move people and motivate them. And that's something that's really important. And I've seen CNN do puff pieces for Kamala Harris, but I've never seen the Kamala Harris gang. Yeah, well, just the fact that they don't even have their name shows their lack of enthusiasm. No, you know? of course. Well, look at this. But I've never seen any other candidate except for outside of maybe the Tulsi Troopers. Bernie, Bernie fans. Well, yeah. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Um, I, I view him as 2016, not 2020. Sorry. I'm still, my brain's formatted still from four years well, ago. But look at look, look on the screen, though. What do you see on yeah. the screen? Oh, yeah, total trending. And this stuff matters. I mean, before there was Twitter trending, the, some of these media things can be really just, just but what's watershed trending? motives. Uh, let me see. Hold on a second. Saturday Thoughts. Trump fears Yang. Trump, Trump fears, Yang. fears Yang. Trump fears Yang is trending over the day of Saturday today. And the reason why that highlight is, that's what I wanted to highlight, uh, is that Trump fears Yang is trending. And I'm going to find it real quick because it's a really it's kind of- because that one moment in the movie? Well, yeah, like, that's the point of the clip I want to show you guys. So, so continue, Cardinal. I'll pull it up real quick. Um, well, I was just going to say that I think that you really shouldn't dismiss individual things like this. And the artists that create media like this um, really do move the needle. Sometimes they don't. And and, and a great piece of media. I mean, I, I produce films. I know how hard it is to make even sometimes a simply sensational three to five minute uh, compelling political video. Uh, sometimes you make something that's awesome and it doesn't get traction. And other times it, it really does. And 
And there are these watershed moments that media brings to a presidential candidate. I remember when I was a kid on the Arsenio Hall show, Bill Clinton playing the saxophone was just a huge tipping point for him. Um, I remember uh, AOC's first campaign video was wildly compelling and in useful form. And I do remember when John Edwards got doused because of his famous yeah moment uh, that ended up echoing Wasn't all that Howard over. Dean? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Not ended John his Edwards. career. We actually in a stream yeah. we highlighted that the other day. The, the 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 even Dave Chappelle made fun of it. It's pretty bad. But hold yeah. on, this is what I wanted to show you guys. Yeah. So this is the and, this is the media moment right here where Trump fears Yang, and I, I dude, I thought it was hilarious. Well, no, but this is where all kind of just come together. Though. This is what everyone's been saying. So. Yeah. The thing I worry about is that some total unknown that nobody ever heard of comes along. And so he would be so funny moment. But <laughs> yeah. I think that's why we see something like Trump fears Yang trending on Twitter. I think that's why we see something because that's the narrative. And, and again, Kilgrave Films, shout out to him. Link will be in the description. Please check it out. It's a very, very cool video. Um, but that's what we wanted to show you guys that look like putting these little videos together and stuff like this. It, I don't think putting little videos together. Whatever you say on Twitter when you do stuff on social media. I mean, this is a clip that I saw that's, that really struck out to me. Now, this, of course, he's being facetious in the title of this tweet here. This is him walking into a, a meeting of supporters. Like, they knew he was coming. He knew they were there. This is, it's not stage. It's just he's being tongue in cheek. Still, listen to the response he gets walking into this fast food restaurant uh, to supporters. It's crazy. <laughs> him in uh, New Hampshire right now where uh, uh -huh. I believe Steve Marchand is working with the campaign did a lot put, did a lot of good work putting together a lot of cool uh, gatherings for people but look I mean we can see here we go here are people again uh, this is from uh, his campaign manager Zach Grauman where you could see the you could see the people lining up outside before a speech today I mean, that's pretty impressive right there look there's the Bernie camp just kind of Biden with no energy it is kind of staged because he's filming it but look at this energy people. oh you cannot compare those two you cannot compare those two it's not well remember though it, it could be hey guys we're about to film a video make sure you make some noise and those other people aren't but still and then i think i have one yeah more. but come on we've all been to these rallies and what happens is yes you do say hey we're about to film a video everybody act excited everybody cheer on three you do do that but you also have all the little interns and all the volunteers coming up and saying hey over there, they're about to film a video, so let's all boo. <laughs> or else, oh, hey, they're about to film a video, so yeah. let's all act crazier than them. You know, I mean, it's like a positivity protest at half of these rallies. And and, and it's awesome when, like, one camp tries to out-cheer another camp. That's – this is actually one of the things that I love. Like, when I was a kid, politics actually had this kind of, like, this positive competition to it that was lost as soon as identity politics took over. But to a certain extent with Dave Chappelle fighting it, all the other comedians fighting it and Andrew Yang ignoring it. I think that positivity is allowed to, to cripple, not cripple, sorry to um, not cripple. That was a horrible word, but was, uh, it, it is allowed to come to the top again. Cause the cream of the crop rises to the top, but so does the scum. And we've gotten so used to the scum. We've forgotten how awesome the cream is. And that cream in politics is actually, actually, happening again and it is what is actually making people enthusiastic about yang i think that is why van jones likes him so much i think that is why anderson cooper as cynical and jaded as he probably is having covered politics for 20 years is saying wow this is awesome this is why tucker carlson is like wow i've just been watching clowns operate like clowns for a decade on primetime fox news you are awesome I, I really think that's why these the, he, he draws so much attention. So, um, got anything else you want to say? Uh, I just wanted to highlight one other thing. And it's, okay. it's goofy, and it's really, it's only, a lot of you guys don't get it. <laughs> However, uh, recently, one of the most popular games in the world in the last few months has been a game called uh, World of Warcraft Classic. I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar somewhat with the name of it. Anyway. They're, every time they release a new iteration of this game, there's like a race to be the first person to reach the highest level. This year... Remember the Yang Gang did it. I believe there's actually a, a group of people in there that call themselves the Yang Gang who are running around and getting a whole bunch of these world first achievements in the name <laughs> of Andrew Yang. <laughs> I, it's, it's goofy, but dude, people around the world are trying to get these things that done. The people epic. doing it first in the world, Yang Gang. And that's just an, a, well, I another gotta tell end. You, don't underestimate these international influences. 
guess what? In World War II, oh, take a shot. In World War II, there was actually an information campaign in which the American government asked all of the family members of Europeans to write letters back in which they said, hey, like, please reject fascism. Um, and a lot of people believed it helped stem the tide shortly of the rise of the dictators of the West. All right. And also, we notice on this show that we, we got fans in Laos, in Hong Kong. We got fans in uh, Australia. What's up, Australia, Yang Gang? We got friends all over the world, and though many of them are not U.S. citizens and cannot vote, they do have sway in the attention that a candidate gets, okay? And that sway, especially if it's just positive publicity, does make a significant difference, and uh, it is really an interesting thing to watch. So what do you got going on here? Oh, just another, and I'm just highlighting another thing, like I said, from the World of Warcraft angle, but just wanted to, you look at the name of the character on this, it's a... President, President Yang, Yang. and oh. this is again this is, a, this is a, an a image of another world first achievement they made. So, I mean, the, the Yang Gang is spreading. Like I, I was, I was joking. The Yang Gang is spreading to Azeroth now, which is where the the world where that game takes place. And just the idea that this stuff was moving. And then I want to use this time to talk about one more thing. Okay. And this is an event we've been uh, that someone actually turned us on to. I'm very glad they did. Um, and basically, here's the idea. So September 12th, which is in about five days from now. There's going to be the third Democratic debate. A lot of us are looking forward to it because these debates are interesting always. Weird stuff happens somehow every time. Mics, audio problems, weird grandstanding. Gillibrand won't be there this time, but you know what I mean. Anyway, yeah. there's a movement on that day uh, for everyone to post. Let me move this up a little bit so you can see it better. For everyone to go on social media and post uh, I support Yang or my Yang star and or uh, Twitter, whatever you use. And just share images of you guys, videos, whatever got you in the Joe Rogan podcast. I'm sure a lot of people just make sure running into that debate. These people want to make sure as we run into that third debate, Andrew Yang is already dominating social media before the debate. That was really cool, fun, just another really neat kind of grassroots thing you, you know the see other, going around with the Yang gang. You know the other reason why I think all these hashtags and this international support for Andrew Yang is so important is so far he's gotten Elon Musk, he's gotten Nicolas Cage, he's gotten, you know, a, a lot of other people, supposedly Casey Neistat is... No, not is, even supposedly, for sure Casey uh, Neistat. Oh, okay, yes, yeah, sorry. Well, he hasn't done anything official, right? I mean, he wears a math hat and talks about Andrew Yang on Twitter all the time, but... Yeah, I mean, he hasn't come out and, and uttered the E word of endorsement, right? Well, he does endorse him in action. He actually okay, endorses fair him. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's 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 fair enough. Um, how cool would it be if anonymous, the hacktivist group, that would actually, in my in my up. opinion, I would I would support Andrew Yang less ah! if he was endorsed <laughs> by those people. So oh, they always go for the populist. Uh, like okay, cool. Really? Anyway. Hold on. Really? They do? Tell me, please. I was unaware of this. I didn't know. <laughs> I remember when they were doing their nonsense in what two thousand five and six. But tell me, please. What do these people do? I had no idea. Okay, well, anyway, um, guys, let us know what you well, think. Hold on, hold on, before, oh. before we wrap up. So, I want to show this picture okay. of, like I said, look at this. He's, he's just posting, this is what I do in my spare time, Casey Neistat, probably like one of the top 10 most popular YouTubers on the platform, wearing his math hat. He actually ran into a couple of uh, a couple of our friends um, we met at the uh, Santa Monica event. Yeah. And he ran into them when they were leaving. That was really cool. So, oh. I want to highlight that. And then I believe there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys in relation to... Oh, here we go. And then here's just a picture, one more picture of everyone hanging out at the New Hampshire event. And I just want to talk about one last thing, too, while I show this picture. Uh -huh. uh, recently in New Hampshire, they had a Democratic uh, National uh, Committee uh, rally or something. I apologize. I got the title wrong. Anyway, 19 candidates spoke. Andrew Yang spoke last. And when he came up on stage, it was like he was a rock star, like yeah. always. And I just, like I said, I, I don't want people to, to miss... Un underestimate. I, I was watching you. I was watching this speech on stream with you guys. People brought up the idea. They said, "I don't think this speech is really a needle mover." But every time Andrew Yang shows up at an event and he gets up on stage, and there is a crowd of people. When he goes to the crowd and he says, "How much is Amazon paying taxes?" and they go zero right back at him, dude. There's DNC higher ups there that are seeing this. Yeah. People that are watching the television who are actually like, neutral and don't care, they notice there was one guy who got up on stage and he was like, "He was a rock star. He, he was playing to the crowd. He would shout at them." You know, what do they do? They do this. They yell right back at him. I mean, it was crazy. And it's really something you don't see from other candidates. So I just I just wanted to highlight that again. And then once again, guys, uh, on the 12th of this month, uh, remember to uh, join. I'll have a link in the description to the Facebook page. So you guys can join into the Andrew Yang uh, debate movement as well. So there we go, card. That's all I got. All right. Awesome. So let us know what you guys think in the comments below. We're going to make sure we got the rest of the hats 
on um, the website of Problem oh, yeah, well, Politics. You want to get into that more? If people who didn't, didn't watch streams and didn't know. We got hats. Yes, we're selling hats. They're Problem Solver Politics hats. The very same one Cardin is wearing right now. And uh, these will be available on the website for purchase. Um, just go to problemsolverpolitics.com. We'll have a link in the description as well. So there we go. Yes, yeah, so you can get your very own hat. It's going to be pretty awesome. It'll be at problemsolverpolitics.com. And. Uh, Make sure if you haven't liked this video yet that you like it. If you haven't subscribed, please make sure that you subscribe as well. And uh, we're starting to stream now every Tuesday. Actually, we're not starting to. We've been streaming now. But now on Twitch. Yeah, but now we're streaming on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday and sometimes on Saturdays or Sundays. So make sure that you follow us on social media so you can be aware of when we are streaming. And we make sure that we have these conversations with you guys when you uh, participate in the chat. So anyway, if you haven't liked yet, make sure you like. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. This is Problem Solver Politics. We'll see you guys in the next video.